Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I have a rant for you today. But before we jump in, thank you to everyone for pushing us over 2,500 subscribers. We greatly appreciate it as we continue to push forward with this wonderful channel and trying to bring you the best content we can. But let's jump right on in. Team USA Women's Basketball captures gold medal 67-66 over france the game took place at 9 30 a.m eastern standard time so i will say i wasn't awake to watch it nor did i think it would even be competitive because i didn't expect anything because i as i said for the entirety of this these olympics i expect the the u.s women's team to win these games easily they're by far by far the most talented team in this tournament They have 12 WNBA players. A lot of these teams don't have, didn't have any. France did not have one WNBA player. Let's, let's, let's think about that for a second. France did not have one WNBA player yet had Team USA on the ropes for the duration of the game. France was up 10 in the third. I did actually end up watching the game because I saw the score. I really wasn't going to speak about this game or anything about it because I really didn't care. But when you see the score and you see how it happened and you see that they were down 10 in the third, they did come back and take the lead. They were trailing late in the fourth. This is what we, I'm not not going to, I don't have to, I don't have to say it, but it's the truth. This is why Caitlin Clark should have been on this team. I watched this game. This game was embarrassing. Both teams played horrendously. This was bad basketball. This was bad basketball. Unlike the men yesterday with Team USA versus France, ultra, ultra competitive, but ultra competitive in a, in a way of good basketball. It was, it, was, it was one of the better basketball games that I've seen in quite some time. Um, I enjoyed the actual competition of that game. I still think that Team USA, because of how the NBA is played now, has just gotten way too soft. And then they're not really conditioned for the level of physicality that these MB, these international teams are bringing because they know the rules. And I think that NBA desperately has to go back to 1990s rules. At the very least, be play with FIBA rules across the board, with the exception of the three-point line. I think it should remain uh, 23-9. Like, I think the three-point line should be pushed out more than NBA because everyone thinks they're a jump shooter. But I think if you actually have the NBA utilize international rules, it'll make them a lot more prepared when they go into international competition because they all of a sudden they get out there and they act like they don't know what to do. And, and, you know, they look like they don't know what to do sometimes, but they don't understand. They can't handle the banging, the pushing. That's what basketball in the 90s was. That's what it looked like. But the ladies, the talent gap has not closed. The talent gap is what the talent gap is. The women are so much more talented than these international teams. You've got 12 WNBA players, and you told us these are the 12 best women. Are they? Are they really? I just watched Diana Taurasi sit the bench the entirety of the game. I just watched Jewel Lloyd not get off the bench the entirety of the game. I just watched a team that if it wasn't for Ka Copper, Kalia Copper in the second half, Team USA would have lost. Copper really brought infused some energy into them in the third and fourth quarters. Without her, they lose that game. They lose because they did not look good. I mean, if you look at the statistics of this game, you know, the team stats, the Team USA shot 33.9%. France shot 31.5%. The first half, the amount of missed shots, the game was 25-25 at halftime. It was Bad. Really bad. Team USA hits two three-pointers the entire game. Kelsey Plum hit both of them. So you have a team that can't shoot. Can't shoot. I mean, I watched Asia Asia Wilson miss so many layups. I watched, I mean, she finished 6 of 14, but God, she was like a lot lot of bunny layups. I watched Brianna Stewart miss a fast break layup. I, I mean, if it wasn't for the free throw shooting and Kai Copper, they lose because they went to the line 34 times. You know, 
and France had called for 25 fouls to 13 in the U.S. You know, the U.S. did have 18, have 18 assists on 19 made baskets. But overall, you could see a team. I mean, the game was played at a, at a snail's pace. France is known for having good defense. You cannot play a game at a snail's pace. And this is with France shooting 7 for 36 from 3. They could not make a shot. They were bad offensively, yet they were leading by 10 midway through the, the third quarter. I mean, they jumped out with a 10-0 run to start the second half. You know, I, I don't sit here and tell me these were the best 12 we got. They're not. They're not. We left, we left one home. And I'll tell you this. The post play was not good either. Outside of Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart for most Brianna Stewart was bad today, but for most of the for most of the tournament, post play wasn't that great. You know, I, I would have like I said before, I would have had Angel Reese on this team too. I, I think she brings a great deal of energy in how she plays. But watching the point guard play, watching the guard play, watching them not push the ball down the floor, watching watching them walk it up the floor, watching them not, these guards not really looking down court for easy buckets. That's how you blow a team out like France. And that's how they didn't play. They played a slow 67 points. 67 points? Do you think a team led by, a team with Caitlin Clark playing point guard is going to score 67 points with the talent like this around her? They attract me. And look, I I thought from the jump that the U.S. would win the gold medal. From when you know the team was announced, it wasn't like a, it was a concern of the ability of the players. It's just a matter of they blew the opportunity. Like I didn't wake up at nine thirty to watch the game because Caitlin Clark wasn't in it. And if it and if it wasn't for the fact that it was a sixty seven sixty six game, I wouldn't have watched it. I would have just seen the results and okay, move on. Now we can get back to women's WNBA basketball, which kicks back off on um, August 15th. But I wouldn't have watched it. Yeah, I, I. they weren't good. They weren't. Chelsea Gray was terrible. Jackie Young today was terrible. Sabrina Inescu came off the bench. She barely, she didn't play for the first two and a half quarters. And she ended up playing 10 minutes and finished with three assists. She, but they were very loose with the ball. Copper's energy helped a great deal. But this wasn't some this wasn't an exciting team to watch. There was nothing exciting about it. And the game itself was bad. You, a team shoots 31.5%. I mean, if you saw the shots that France missed, I mean, beyond the fact that they missed so many wide open shots, what the amount of layups they missed. You know, this they just Gabby Williams finishes with 19 for France. That's an American-born French player. Her mother is French, born in France, so she's eligible to play for France. However, yeah, she uh, she balled out, but she you know she played really really well. She was the one that played really really well for France. I think most of their players didn't play all that great, but they played good defense. And everything that the U.S. did in this game was played into that. They just look unprepared. They look unprepared. They look unprepared. But this goes back to they don't have a point guard. They don't have a legitimate point guard. They didn't have a point guard on this team the entirety of the tournament and against most of these teams, that doesn't matter. But in this game, like you're not going to sit here and tell me that the U.S. shouldn't beat France by 20. Again, the WNBA claims that they have the 12 best players on this team. And if that's what you think of the 12 best players, then we have a difference in opinion. They, they they sucked. Today, today they sucked. They were bad. And that was everyone, including Asia Wilson, finished with 21 and 13. But, you know, she wasn't good. She, she did nothing to really, really impress, you know. We already, we already, we've already beaten the dead horse with this about how the Team USA Olympic Committee blew an opportunity to market their product. We already know this. That's not changed. But now you ask the question about competition. If you think Caitlin Clark on this team does not have this a much wider margin of victory, you don't know basketball. You don't know what she brings. She brings a breakneck speed. 
I'll tell you right now, Aaliyah Boston could have been on this team. Alyssa Thomas did nothing in this tournament. Brittany Griner did nothing. She's too slow. You could have put Aaliyah Tom, Aly Alyssa Boston, Aly Aaliyah, ugh. Aaliyah Boston, Boston. You could have put Angel Reese, and of course, Caitlin Clark, and Enrique Gumbawale. All four of those women should have been on this team. The team would have been better with all four of them. All four of them. So yeah, uh, the Olympics are over. Team USA did capture gold, and of course, I've seen a few posts where people were saying, yeah, they, they, they got the gold, and, and now Caitlin Clark fans can't say for the next four years if they had lost, <laughs> if Caitlin Clark had been there. Well, I'm going to say it from a perspective of, if Caitlin Clark had been there, there's no way this game is this close. There's no way they look that bad on the floor. There's no way they shoot 33.9% from the field. Because a lot of those shots, they, because Caitlin Clark's getting the layups. I'm telling you, just the, the overall passing that I watched today, they turned it over 19, 19 times. They were fumbling the ball left and right. Um, just by themselves, nothing being done, just fumbling the ball away. They did not look good. And they did not look good because they had no cohesion on offense. They had no, you know, there was no rhythm to their game. So... Yeah, I do believe that if they had won, if Caitlin Clark was playing, they win this game by 25 points. 20, 25 points. So we'll never know. Nonetheless, congratulations to the Team USA women for winning gold. But this was not the way that it should have looked. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a, leave a, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. Come on now.